want to do it? Ah. Alright, so the first thing I wanted to ask you is like, uh, actually let's just talk about the permit and see if you can uh, show on camera. Yeah. Um, what, do you th what do you think about fucking Wolverine? Well, what do you think about that fight this weekend with Wolverine? And I thought it was disappointing. Um, I think everyone kind of uses Wolverine as someone to be a top three heavyweight in the world. Mm -hmm. And in fact, was he didn't look like it. He looked kind of scared to commit. Uh, that being said, uh, Fabrizio Verdun didn't do anything. Neither guy did much for, you know, a, a main event, or a Strike Force main event. You know, Strike Force is finally being promoted by Zufa, owned by the UFC. Um, they're, they're getting put on the map. More people, more people are tuning in with the, you know, the advertising the UFC's put into it and the media relations they put into it. And I, th I thought I kind of failed. Uh, I didn't think either guy looked that impressive. And, and granted, you know, Verdun's went over Fedor incredibly impressive, you know, the way Overeem has been destroying people, whether it's K1 or US, you know, MMA, crazy impressive, you know. Uh, you put them two in the ring, finally you give Alistair Overeem a top 10 opponent, finally we get to see it. It's a dud, man. It's disappointing. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see him uh, Bigfoot. You know, Bigfoot still is the real deal. He's a big guy. He's going he's gonna to press the action. Both guys are going to hit each other in the face, stand in front of each other. Do that. I'm pumped for that, though. What, uh, what was the most so far, like, uh, let's, let's stick to what we'll go right now. What was the, uh, what was the most exciting thing that you ever, that you covered so far? Um, man, well, I mean, obviously the UFC 118, my first UFC event to be live. You hear that intro music? They do, um, a song, I believe it's by The Who. They kind of show a highlight video before the main card starts. It, it, incredible. It's like your hair, like, sticks up on your arms. It's like one of those feelings, you know. Um, see Joe Lozon walk into the garden. Everyone's on their feet. By far, the whole night, UFC 118, Joe Lozon got the biggest, you know, got the biggest crowd, the biggest crowd behind him. That was incredible. As far as local MMA, um, last year, Moosin, of course, it was the Marius Pujanowski, the world's strongest man, versus Tim Sylvia. Mm -hmm. um, they had a local guy in there, Mike Campbell, taking on UFC veteran Hughes Edwards. Mike, he, he took it to him. Mike, of course, fought in the WEC twice, but he lost both times. And here he is, locally, fighting in Worcester, DCU Center, like 8,000 people in the crowd. He defeats the UFC veteran, he used that, or like, it was just one of those times you're like, happy, happy to, you know, root for the local guy and see him prevail like that. Yeah. Yeah. If, if somebody was just, like, just got into MMA, or mm -hmm. it's like, the, let's say you're trying, to, you're trying to get your girlfriend into it, or you knew one of your buddies that wasn't into it before, yeah. What, what would be a good place locally to start and go see your first show? Yeah, um, you know, honestly, the, there, are, there are a ton of good shows around here. I mean, in, in Massachusetts, um, the three that are, are kind of, there's three or four prominent ones that are kind of consistent. The WCF, by far, is one of the most popular shows in, in the past year. They, they took kind of a year layoff. They just came back the other week. The first WC of World Championship Fighting, they took their they took about a year layoff. But um I mean guys that have come out of that promotion include John Jones. Of course they have Danny Lowe's on fight all the time, guys like Mike Campbell, um, John Frangie, went to the W E C a lot of good local kids. Um, as far as consistently every month is the AFO in Mansfield, by far the busiest local promotion. They're always solid. The type of promotion that really promotes the uh, the younger fighters you might not know as well. The fights are good. Um, Cage Titans, they're um, they usually fight in smaller venues, but the, the matchups are top notch. If you want to leave the state, go to CES in Twin River, in Rhode Island. What's CES? CES oh. MMA, um, classic entertainment and sports presented by Jimmy Birchfield, who's a local boxing promoter. By far, they have the biggest budget, so um, their their fight cards are amazing. Okay. I would say, uh, hands down, right now, they have probably the best local fight cards. I mean, they just had Alex Carlex make his debut locally a couple weeks ago. And they're always having things like that. If I wanted to stay in the Boston area, where would you recommend? Yeah, if you're staying in the Boston area, I mean, like I said, if, if you're going to pick WCF, WCF's coming back in September, you get Cage Titans next weekend, and then July you get AFO. You have multiple things to choose from. It's tough for me to pick one because I like all the promoters. Okay. Where would you go Where would you go to see one of those? So? Um, the AFO is uh, Mansfield Holiday Inn. Cage Titans next weekend, they're doing um, uh, uh, one of the, I think it's like local 109 Union House. Mm -hmm. so, but a lot of times they do their stuff off, um, I think it's with that, 93. WCF though, always in Wilmington, Shriners Auditorium, 
great venue. They do a ring too. WCF. Everyone else with a cage. WCF goes for the ring, which is interesting. It's the better view, actually, of fight. Um, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna ask you the difference as far as a, uh, as a, what's, what, what do you see as the technical difference when you get a ring at the event versus a cage? Um, takedowns. You know, you can press the guy up against the cage, you can double leg him, get your underhooks together and take him down, whereas the ring that's falling through is a lot tougher. Um, I think some people say the ring kind of makes people stand up more. Mm -hmm. I, I think that I think that's true, but, but then again, wrestling is just such a dominant part of MMA. People are going to get down no matter what. I mean, I prefer the cage just for the fact I don't see people falling out of the ring. You know, I mean, for me, I'm sitting ringside. I don't want people falling on my laptop, but, uh, you know. I mean, either or, you're sitting ringside, you're going to get blood on you. It's happened to you multiple times. What about, um, the last question I wanted to ask you is, uh, what what's the next like big exciting thing where a local guys fighting either on a national scale or a local scale the next big thing for the Boston area like, the biggest fighter I mean and do you want like the next big fighter to come out of the Boston area or the next big what event you, well what do you what, like what's the thing for you what what are you anticipating the most that you're like looking forward to I mean honestly I want the UFC to come back here um I it, I from what I'm hearing. Up to 2012, they're coming back to Boston, which would be, you know, which would be great. I was kind of hoping, you know, once a year, you know, you start to see them. They're going to Pittsburgh this weekend. They're going to Philadelphia again in August. East Coast is getting some love, but Boston's not coming. I want that. But also, I mean, because I always look for um, local guys that get moved up. You know, local guys that are getting their shot. I mean, Danny Lozon right now in the local scene is the best local fighter in New England. He's a kid that's just so incredibly talented. He just has to get it together. He has to stay out of trouble. He has to stay in the gym and be consistent with that. I think that he's the type of kid I'm looking forward to seeing fight again and fight in the UFC again. What about uh, things like any things that we know are scheduled? Oh, let's just go with Kenny Florian versus Jose Aldo. You know, uh, Kenny Florian is by far the most successful MMA fighter out of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. You know, he is the guy that's been the closest to getting a title. You know, he's had a couple of lightweight title shots. Um, it's hard not to stand behind a guy like that. You know, Jose Aldo is a, is a different kind of beast. That being said, Kenny's big for a featherweight. You know, he's experienced. He has the name value. You know, for him to win, it would be it would be almost like uh, Boston, you know, Rocky. You know, he's going to be the underdog versus Aldo. I mean, he, he lost for his BJ Penn. And his first ever title shot, he lost for Sean Sharp. How do you see it going? Um, man, that's uh, tough. That's tough. I mean, Jose Aldo's going to try to stand up with him and pick him apart. I mean, you saw Kenny versus, you know, in his last fight. What, what did he do? He really used his jiu-jitsu to get the top position, kind of ground and pound. He, some, he has some bad intention elbows that he likes to throw. That's what he has to do, though. He has to grind Aldo out, take him into deep waters, and try to finish him. I mean, his jiu-jitsu is on par with anybody. And I don't think people really realize that. He was, I mean, when he was down here locally, it was his jiu-jitsu that was, you know, the big, big thing, and he's kind of evolved into a, you know, complete fighter. All right, thanks, Mark. I really appreciate your time. Yeah.